All right, looks like we're recording. I believe. So we are right now. If you look at. Uh, sorry, my computer's running a little bit slow. It's a uh, server issue. real bad. Okay. Go back here. So we're running a mono red deck. Um, uh, a little bit of the new release called I'm um, basically running um, Snowlands. Um, trying to see what we can do. Now, I've been battling honestly for uh, 10 days and uh, right now we're at diamond tier one so this next game is either we're going back you know one step or we're making it to mythic so I just wanted to take you along with me and see what actually happens now the deck that we're running here just so I'm so sorry about this weight. This um, my internet speed is is awesome, but I think it's just getting used. So we're just using mono red. Now the only changes is we've been uh, since Caldheim uh, was released, we've been using Frostbite, which is actually a pretty damn good card. Um, you know, especially with that one being able to deal three damage as long as you have uh, three or more Snowlands is. Uh, is, is pretty severe it can, it can do some serious damage now what I did was I threw a couple of shocks in here and I'm running the relic robber that's basically the only difference between regular mono red and and what I've got going on and relic robber is is um, it's it's proven to be a pretty serious card like I said I mean I'm, I'm at one game away from mythic at this point from uh, this card and and relic robber you know, oftentimes what I'll do is, you know, one cast, I'll throw a Fervent Champion out there, boom, bam, for one, and then I'll leave it alone, and then I'll, you know, drop another land out there, and maybe I'll have another Fervent Champion to throw out there, or maybe a Rimrock Knight to boost Fervent, but I'll leave it be to leave myself one mana, and then if they throw out, you know, anything that I can kill with either a Frostbite or a Shock, then the next turn allows me to put Relic Robber out there and hit them for two plus maybe Fervent Champion, so three plus the one that uh, Relic Robber gives with the colorless goblin creature that gives them uh, a negative one, and, and and that can boost it out pretty pretty darn quick. Um, so it's it's all about haste in this deck. It's all about getting points as far as fast as you possibly can. Faceless Haven is basically there to, um, you know, hit them if they are able to clear the board. Um, and, and that's won me a few games here and there, but, you know, it's not wildly popular, but, you know, there we are. So, here we go. Last game. I'm going to take you with me, regardless of whether we win or lose. We're going for it. Last two seasons that I've been in, I've not been able to make it to Mythic yet. The status of Arena has been rough. Alright. Well, we go first, so that's a good sign. We're going to go ahead and keep what we've got here. Cast out one. We've got Sky Nomad, so he's going to be chasing us. He's going to be taking care of anything that we put out there. He's not going to be on the offensive. So let's see what we can get done. So right away we're going to go ahead and put out Rimrock Knight. 
see if we can scare him off a little bit with that. The idea with Yorion is that you need to make him chase you. You need to make him deal with the things that you put out on the board. If you are reactionary with Yorion, you're never going to win. The hope is that you can deal with the things that, or that you make him deal with the things that you put out on the board. That's the that's the hope. So here we've got nothing to deal with on the board. I'm just going to put Annex out there in the hopes that if he kills off Rimrock, I'll at least be able to get a one one. All right, that's actually good for us. So let's see what we can do here. Hit him for down to 17, got a annex, so a board clear will at least leave us with two one ones. With Yorion, it's it's a pretty reactionary deck, so you wanna see what you can do. Okay, we're gonna put out Fervent Champ. That's gonna afford us a pretty big hit right off the bat. Right down to eight. That's a, that's a pretty good hit, especially with Annex, because even if we clear the board, we've got four one ones sitting out there, so that'll bring him down to four immediately, even if he can do a board sweep. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty good shot at it. Depending on what he does, I might shock him for two and leave him with six laying. Okay, so he's going to destroy a non-land permanent. That's going to be Hanex. We're going to let him. But see, that leaves us with plenty enough to kill him on the next turn. So that's good game. And that's the end of it. And there we get to Mythic. That's the last game, and we are into Mythic. Let's see what we get here. Boy, it's just taking its sweet time tonight. Yeah. All right, well, I guess we'll go over to the profile and see. <laughs> it didn't want to give us a little bit of a show. All right, so we're Mythic number 869. Uh, that's pretty exciting. That's, that's not bad. Uh, I've been battling for quite a while to get to this point, and uh, number 869 is not bad. So let me got, let me sh let me show you the deck here. That way you can reproduce it if you would like to. Okay. So again, four fervent champions. Those are my first and fast shooters. Frostbite is just a killer with the snow covered mountain and faceless haven. Um, it's been able to kind of control things because it only takes one to do three damage to a creature so you can kind of control the board uh, along with being able to drop drop things fast now one thing that I'm doing that is is not really in the meta is shock and the reason why I do that is to handle initial creatures you know anything I can I can do to handle the initial creature give me a little bit of control uh, Rimrock Knight it's very uncommon that I'm actually using Boulder Rush on this, uh, the, the plus two plus zero. Uh, most, most of the time I'm using it as a two cast uh, to put a three one out there as quickly as possible to be able to get attackers uh, for Embercleave if, you know, if I'm able to get it out there as fast as possible. And then Robber the Rich, of course, everybody knows about Robber the Rich, but the thing that you got to remember about this is Sometimes you don't want to put Robert the Rich out just as fast as you can to, to kill things. And that applies oftentimes to a lot of this. Um, even if maybe I have a Fervent Champion in the opening hand, I might not put it out there with the ostensible idea that I might use Shock. Uh, if, 
if I have, you know, let's say a couple of fervent champions with a shock and then some lands, I might just put out uh, a land and then space bar over real quick so that they don't know that I have some kind of you know, attack mentality. And then I might shock them at the end of their other turn for two, and then I'll put out both fervent champions and hit them for four. What that does is it, it requires them basically at that point to respond to my fervent champions or else they're not really going to be able to do anything. If, if they don't respond to the fervent champion, they're going to hit them for two and two on the next turn plus whatever else I can throw out there. And and if I have a Romic, uh, excuse me, a Rimrock Knight, uh, then I might be able to put a plus two on one of those fervent champions so I'm hitting them for four and two, which is six, or if they can block with something, I'm doing first strike with four, which is pretty much going to kill anything out there that's on the board, even if it's got death touch. An X Harden Harden Forged uh, Harden and Forge is is just a card that you have to have if if you're going to use Embercleave because it can it can just be devastating on the double strike, uh, and and X helps you a little bit if you've got low creatures out there that that can reproduce as one ones if they if, if they die uh you, you, again it's it's with mono red it's it's one of those cards that forces the opponent to respond it's not it's not allowed that you can just kind of leave it alone and deal with it later if you don't forcibly respond to it it's going to take you out now this arnie broken brow is is a new card uh with the with the call nine release uh, and it's, 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 I cannot understate how powerful this card actually is. Now the haste of it as a three cast is, is pretty badass as it is. But when you consider, let's, let's say that you got a couple of fervent champions out there, or maybe a Rimrock Knight, uh, a Robber of the Rich, any of those cards that you can kind of introduce early. And then you put an Arnie Broken Brow out there. Now, when... It, 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 his his boast, which which only costs one. So let's say, you know, for instance, just to, just as a for instance, you've got a couple of fervent champions out there, and you've got a robber of the rich, and then you throw an Arnie Broken Brow out there, and you've got enough mana to put an Annex Harden Forge out there. Now on the next turn, let's say Annex is a a nine three because of all all of the red that you've got out there. If you shoot out Arnie Broken Brow as just a lone ranger out there, just just attack with him alone, and then you Ember Cleave him, for instance, which technically would only make him a you know a four a four four with with a double strike, which is can be devastating enough. But if you use his boast uh, after that. If Annex is out there, and let's say Annex is, of course, at that point, he would be a 9-3. He becomes 1 plus the greatest power. So Arnie becomes a 10-3 with the Amber Cleave, which is first in double strike. At that point, there's really nothing that the opponent can do. There's nothing that you can do to stop the win at that point. And, and that's what's kind of brought me to Mythic, uh, 869 at this point. Bone Crusher Giant, uh, it's, it's a control card. I find that oftentimes Frostbite, Shock, and Bone Crusher Giant are there to clear the road for Relic Robber. If you can get Relic Robber out there on, you know, turn three, with clearing the road, you know, if, if you've got a Fervent Champion in your pocket, but you've also got a Shock, you don't want to drop Fervent Champion because if they put something out there that you can shock real quick and then throw out Relic Robber with a clear path, then you get the Goblin Construct. And, and so many times that Goblin Construct has won me the game. I can't, I can't, even, exp I, I can't even express how many times it's happened. Uh, Torbrand, he's, you know, it's just a, a pill-in-the-pocket kind of card uh, when you need him. 
uh, if you've got Annex out there and you've got a bunch of different, you know, Fervent Champion and, and God, you know, Rimrock Runite and, and they get killed and you end up with, you know, four or five one ones and then you throw Torbrand out there, that's enough to get it done. Embercleave needs no explanation. When it, when it, when it, when you use it, you use it. Um, Snow Covered Mountain. This is a kind of a required card because it, it, it fuels frostbite. Um, you need to have, uh, you know, snow snow permanence uh, in order for it to deal three damage. And and there's a thoughtfulness in this and that, you know, if you've got two snow covered mountains out there, uh, and then they throw out something with, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't know. A three three anything and and of course frostbite won't do enough damage to kill that it'll just do two and then the next turn you can throw out another snow covered mountain if you've got it in your hand frostbite that creature it'll deal three damage it'll kill it and then maybe you can throw out a rimrock knight and and start you know attacking in, in addition to what you've already done faceless haven is is i think might be the key to this to this deck faceless haven uh one, one thing i'll mention is that fervent champion for instance you know it it, it whenever you attack uh, a target attacking knight gets plus one plus zero until the end of the turn faceless haven for some reason uh qualifies as that i and, and i don't know why now it says faceless haven because of four three creature with vigilance and uh, creature types, uh, all all creature types. Okay, so it's it's all creature types. That's that's the reason why it works. But if you faceless haven and you've got a fervent champion out there, immediately the faceless haven gets a five, uh, three, and that that can be devastating. And with this new Tabalt's trickery uh, deck that's out there, uh, this this can be you know that Tabalt's trickery deck can be devastating. But Faceless Haven can be the winner for it. I, I have won multiple games against the Tabalt's Trickery deck simply because of Faceless Haven. And, and oftentimes the way that it plays out is, is that Faceless Haven will be out there. And then, um, you know, they'll do the Tabalt's Trickery. And recently, for some reason, most of the time, I'll get the uh, the eight eight kraken creature um, that that comes out based on it, and because we've got so much low cast, you know, so, so much low cast creatures here. Oftentimes, what I'll do is is I'll have enough out there to put out faces, have him hit him for four, goes back to you know a regular land, and then I'll throw out a fervent champion, and the fervent champion can block the eight eight because they'll attack with it, and then. Um, you know, of course, for every champion dies, but then I'll be able to put out Faceless Haven again and hit him for another four, and then I'll throw out a Robber of the Rich, and that'll block the eight eight. And and as you you know, you may or may not know with with Tabal's Trickery, uh, the deck is is that if if a person is able to get that Tabal's Trickery mechanic to work. Uh, oftentimes, after that, after the you know whatever it is that they get the Tabalt's trickery to work for them, after that it is completely an empty deck. After that, they're just throwing out lands and whatever it was that they could get out with Tabalt's trickery, it, it's over. That's that's the game. Um, and so, if you can control what it is that they did with the Tabalt trickery, trickery uh, then you're good to go. And one. <laughs> One game, this frostbite actually won me the game because I was able to uh, get, kick it off because I had Rimrock Knight out there and I had a Fervent Champion, and then they put out um, uh, Eugen, the Ineffable, which would have, uh, you know, exiled anything, you know, with two or below. But when they put out Eugen before they were able to exile, I frostbited it twice, and and that put it down to a one mana so even if it killed itself off it could only exile one you know the one man so it could exile my fervent champion but it couldn't get rid of my rimrock knight 
and the person only had two life left. So I good gamed them at that point and they exploded because, uh, because it was over. So, uh, so yeah, that's, I mean, that's the deck and, uh, that's what did it. And, uh, here we are 17 days from, uh, from the end of the road and, and we are in mythic. So, uh, if you guys have any questions, any, uh, any comments, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, give me a, uh, a shout out a little bloop bloop in the uh, bottom of the of the uh, comment section so uh, thank you guys appreciate you anybody watching this and uh, yeah that's the way to mythic there we are